So far, we have discussed the evolution of computer. The next topic that we are going to discuss is generation of computer. We have witnessed so far uh, four generations. The first generation, it was between year 1940 to 1956. For, us, uh, for uh, in the duration of these 16 years, we have used computers with, uh, which are designed using vacuum tubes. Can you just see? The first generation computer, it uses vacuum tubes for circuitry. Next, it uses magnetic drums for storage. And the, the pro, most of the programming are done using binary language. That is, you will be using only zeros and ones to give instructions. You will not be using which we are using it now. Next, a few examples of uh, your first generation computer are ENIAC, EDVAC and UNIVAC. Now, you can just see the characteristics of first generation computer. As I said earlier, these are designed using vacuum tubes. Since we are using vacuum tubes for the full entire circuitry, it will be very large. And the installation, it will occupy more space. Next thing, since uh, it uses the vacuum tubes, it emits hu uh, very uh, huge Heat, that is a uh, uh, heat produced by this particular device will be very large. So we need to provide air conditioned systems. Otherwise, the system will not work. Next, the system are prone to hardware failure. So they are not reliable. And again, since you are using binary language to give, uh, to key in the instruction and to write the program, what happens? It is laborious process and it will be difficult for us to debug. And next thing, we cannot just debug a particular program when it is executed or during the compilation. Only when the result is uh, 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 seen through the printouts, what we will be doing, we will just again, we need to redo the program and we need to submit the process and the process will be started again and you will be doing the entire process from the beginning. So it is a time consuming process. Next. Uh, the last characteristics, commercial appeal was not there. That is, we are not able to, uh, that is the first generation were not able to reach the market in uh, as we, as they expected. These are the characteristics of first generation computer. Now, we are going to just see how the input for the first generation computers were given. Initially, for these systems, there is the ENIAC, GetBack, UNIBAC, they are used perforated cards or punched cards. Along with this thing, uh, for input they use paper tapes. And using this, we will be giving the input to the system and after the processing, the output will be given as in the form of printouts. This is how the first generation computer will work. Now we will discuss the second generation computers. In this generation, we can just say uh, there is a, instead of vacuum tubes, we have used transistors. So this is a semiconductor device. Generally, the, uh, this, uh, this semiconductor device are manufactured using germanium or silicon. And the size of this transistor will be uh, around in 3 mm or uh, the earlier transistor it was uh, having a radius of 3 centimeter. This was the size of this transistor which we have used for this second generation. So, in uh, compared to your first generation computers, the second generation computers were relatively lesser, uh, smaller in size. Because of this, we, we, we were able to accommodate uh, the second generation computer in relatively smaller space. But the transistors, the semiconductor device, what did it do during the Trans, uh, there is a, uh, there will be a layer. In between that layer, you, uh, the electrons and holes will flow, and it also emit heat. Because of this, this second generation computers do require air conditioned system. And as I said earlier, since we have uh, replaced the vacuum tubes with transistor, the size of this second generation computers are relatively small. And next, these are more reliable than the first generation computer. And you can just say these are portable and prone to, uh, there is hardware failure are less compared to the first generation computer. And the uh, next
next uh, improvement in your, from your first uh, first generation language uh, first generation computers is here we have introduced a particular language called assembly language this is relatively easier compared to your binary coded language because it uses a code called mnemonic codes so those mnemonic codes are easy for us to remember and it is easy for us to uh, know what is the meaning of that particular pro, uh, the particular statement and these are the advantages of uh, the second generation computer we have used mnemonic codes and the size is small and you can just see few examples of your second generation computer are pdp ibm uh, 1401 these are the two examples of your second generation computer and as i said earlier in first generation computer we have used magnetic drums okay the magnetic drums are uh, it is a metal cylinder in which we will be coating iron oxide to uh, and we will be using the magnetic polarity to store the values but in the second generation we will be using the magnetic disk the operation will be sim uh, similar to the previous one but this size of this disk will be relatively smaller than the first generation uh, magnetic drums and it is more efficient we can store uh, uh, a large amount of data using this magnetic disk and we have also used uh, two memories in the second generation one is the primary memory and secondary memory and the secondary memory will have the da uh, data or information or code whatever you say uh, it will be preserved yeah that is uh, all the persistent information will be available in your secondary storage and all the operation level data will be available in your primary memory now so far we have discussed the second generation and second generation duration you can just see it is from 1956 to 1963 now we will discuss about the third generation uh, computers in third generation we have replaced the transistors with integrated circuits this is uh, the abbreviated form of this integrated circuits is ICs and we have used uh, integrated circuits and we have used magnetic disk and other forms which we have now something we say, we say that hot disk and all these magnetic tapes are used for storage and here we have introduced something called RAM okay uh, it is also an chip which will be used as primary memory in say third generation we have used that uh, uh, this is one form of your primary storage next the next improvement in programming uh, thing that is we have used high level languages like your c c++ in the third generation and of course we have introduced the concept called operating system in the third generation now we just see what are the characteristics of the third generation computers as i said those integrated circuits are employed instead of transistor the size of the particular third generation computer have reduced and they are portable and you can rely on it the hardware failure okay very rarely it will happen but it also emit some heat so air condition is must and you can just say in this generation apart from the those things which we have used now for, for input we have used punch cards and for output we, we will be able to get only the printouts but here we have used keyboard there is keyboard and monitors that are employed to give input and to see the output and you will be ha having two types of output one is hard copy next one is soft copy whatever that you get in printout form that we call it as hard copy and whatever you store it in uh, in the system it will be called as soft copy so all these things were possible in third generation computers uh, uh, and you can just see those integrated circuits were used and uh, the systems become very portable and you can even carry a particular system okay? so this was uh, uh, the, this made the third generation computer commercially they were able to produce and they were able to market and they eat at uh, gain an advantage that you can sell these products these computers for uh, end users and it is possible with your third generation computers now we have seen the third generation computer what is the next thing next is what we are going to see what we have now that is fourth generation computers from early 1970s to till date 
whatever we have that are, that are all called fourth generation computers. I said we have used integrated circuits in third generation computer and it will perform some operation. Now we have employed a chip called microprocessor which will have all the processing unit that is the full processing will be performed by this particular chip. And for using of this microprocessor made the computers are smaller in size like a briefcase and the heat emitted by these computers are negligible. So you need not provide air condition. So you can just use with uh, the regular temperature, you can work with the regular temperature in the air, it will work, there won't be any problem. And the era of LSI begins in this generation. Large scale integrated circuits, array of some thousands of transistors that employ in a single chip for performing the operation. And this LSI have two types. We cannot say it is a two types, it is an extension. Initially, we had large scale integration. After that, then more number of transistors were employed. We named it as VLSI. VLSI. Very large scale integrated circuits. And then millions of transistors were employed. We name it as ultra large scale integration ULSI, ultra large scale integration circuits. So after this, uh, after this large scale LSI uh, architecture, we were able to produce single core port, uh, microprocessor, multi core microprocessor, all these things are possible. And one core, different phases, this is also possible we say, uh, nowadays we are getting the quad core processors, dual core processors and core 2 duo processor, all these things are, uh, uh, there is a different manufacturer give their own name, but we have multi core processors and they will be working in uh, diverse application and these generation computers are versatile. You can de uh, develop, uh, you can uh, make the computer to solve different kinds of problem and at, there is a multitasking is possible from uh, the third generation computer. That is, you can do multitasking simultaneously. You can assign to more than one different types of job to the particular system, and it is capable of solving this things. And we have employed GUI to there is a graphic user interface to communicate with the computers. All these things were possible in fourth generation computer. Coming to the next generation, that is the fifth generation, that is from current to beyond, we call it as fifth generation computer. We will be designing some processor, that is we, uh, the processors are capable of thinking on its own. There is artificial intelligence and parallel processing and we say SLSI, super large scale integrated circuits will be employed in fourth generation computer and which we will be used for using it for advanced applications like uh, there is a, it will be able to predict and it will be able to think and it will be able to do all the work as if we uh, as a human being if we do some work we are able to think and we are able to do work and if you are uh, we are trying to develop a particular system with all the capabilities of human we are marching towards the fifth generation we will be getting more and more processes more and more technology in forthcoming years.